So I didn't want to leave this till the last day, although it could have been, but I wanted to give sort of a survey of where the Z2 comes from, the triangulation stuff. Where, where does the obstruction come from? Why, why is Wall's theorem true? Uh, so, of course, Wall's theorem is the very end of a long story. Uh, even one full semester course isn't enough for that story. So I'm just going to try to give you a, just some ideas today. And uh, I'm certainly not an expert on it. Andrew knows more about this subject than I do. But sometimes, it's, you know, I would give a, a different perspective than, well. perspective than Andrew would if uh, he were lecturing. Um, and, uh, you know, there'll, there'll just be some ideas here, so don't, um, don't, don't expect too much. Uh, so let's see. <clears throat> the surgery arose from the following problem. We, we wanted the, so pathologists wanted to classify maxils. And, you know, originally smooth manifolds, but also PL, and then, of course, topological manifolds as well. And so, what did you start with? Well, a manifold, uh, there's all the issues about homotopy type, and we di they didn't even know the homotopy groups of spheres, for example. So they wanted to factor out that homotopy theoretic information. And so they would start with just a complex, which the complex, uh, contained the, the homotopy type. And, uh, and then a manifold always satisfies point gray duality, so you might as well assume that the homology groups of this complex also satisfy point gray duality, which meant there was a top dimensional homology class and then the, the, the usual point gray duality. So they started, so you start with what's called a point gray complex. And this is just a uh, finite simplicial complex. With a, so it's going to be, a, so let's say, an M complex. Uh, well, I'll we'll put the M there. Uh, with a uh, sort of an N dimensional. Um, homology class, well, with the entomology of x, the complex x, uh, the z coefficients equal to z, and the fun, so of course the fundamental class, maybe one in there, and then you have to set, then the complex had to satisfy, satisfy point of duality with respect to that. So with this and satisfying So, if it were a manifold, I mean, think of a manifold. And for our purposes, uh, you can almost think of the n torus or a manifold, but, but in general, a point query complex. Now, that wasn't, so that, that has all the homotopy information that a manifold might have. So then, the question arose. Um, so there's an existence and uniqueness question here. Uh, is X the homotopy type? A manifold of an N manifold of whatever category. And if so, how many? Or classify them. So those are the two questions, existence and uniqueness. Is, was there a manifold just simply homotopy equivalent to x? Uh, and if so, how many? Well, the first, the first issue was that um, a manifold has a tangent bond. And so the first problem was, well, what about this complex? Is there anything like a tangent bundle for the complex? Well, so Mike Spivak 
and his, uh, and his thesis, Mike Spivak, showed that X had, had a spherical vibration. So what was that? Well, in fact, how did he do it? Well, so X, in bed X, simplicially, in some large uh, Euclidean space. So here, here he is as a simplicial complex inside some high dimensional Euclidean space. Well, then one knew from uh, probably going back to Whitehead, they had a nice regular neighborhood. So uh, I don't want to I don't want to think about the case with boundaries, so this is there's really no boundary there. So it has something that's that's kind of like a regular neighborhood. And the synthesis make the um, complex a different color. And you can see the simplices. So this is Whitehead's theorem. Yeah, yeah. And you know, so, so something like this There's probably more subdivisions than I'm drawing, but you get the idea. And so that's a regular neighborhood of it. And then you, you often subdivide it into the barycentric subdivision for some technical reason. So that's frequently done. Um, and then what he did was prove that the boundary of this, so what, what about the boundary? Well, the boundary, uh, is stuff on the outside. The, bound, the, 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 uh, the regular neighborhood collapses down onto the red, down onto X. It collapses. So, for example, uh, you can, by collapsing means you take an outer face, so take this face, for example, and you collapse it, which means you end up with a, a collapse removes an outer face and the interior. So it removes this, <coughs> whatever dimension this is, this edge, and removes the two-dimensional simplex as well. And then you're left with something. And then you might collapse this one. And you might collapse that one. And then having collapsed that, then you have this edge sticking out and then you can collapse the edge. Because it's got a free boundary. So to, in a collapse, you've always got to have a free boundary. And then you just, and it's not unique, there's different ways to do it. But you, uh, you start poking in and you collapse the regular neighborhood down onto the, onto the red, onto X. So this is X. So that's not a bundle map. But homotopically, it's good enough. And it turns out that the homotopically, the preimage of a point is homotopy equivalent to a sphere. So the red room here, take a regular neighborhood. That's just a technical term for the thing I drew. So all the simplices that touch, that touch, the, touch x after some barycentric subdivisions to, to help out. And then it's all the simplices which touch x. And then that's the regular neighborhood. And then uh, the boundary on well, this regular neighborhood n, n collapses to x. So this is this is a homotopic equivalence, but in particular, it collapse, collapses simplex by simplex. So the boundary of n maps to x. You write it. Boundary of n maps down to x. I'll write it that way. And there's a sphere of whatever dimension. Um, embedded in Rs, so the sphere and this is, well, let's assume this is n-dimensional. It doesn't actually have to be. It's just got to have this n-dimensional class. Uh, you have other stuff sticking out that didn't contribute to the homology. But let's suppose it's n-dimensional, just to get an idea. 
So then the dimension of the sphere should be s minus n minus 1. And so there's, uh, so the fiber, this, this is a whole copy of correlates. Fiber might be, you know, there might be a whole, for example, if you, if you, uh, if you well, take this one that I already drew. If you collapse this edge down, then, well, depending on how you do it, uh, let's see, in this, in this dimension, I suppose, you, it could all be pre-images of this, the pre-image of this point is this whole, if you collapse it this way, you know, kind of like, you went, you went like this, you went like this, then that whole edge goes to this point. But that whole edge is homotopic to a point. There's, in this picture, there'd be a zero sphere bubble. And so that's one of the points. And so it's actually a whole line, but it's homotopic over to a point. So that's the idea of this. So if you remember, you get this. And so, uh, so yeah, so you showed that x has a spherical normal vibration. I should put in the word normal because it's, it's like a normal bundle, but just on the top of it. So then, the, uh, so then you, you give this a, uh, you know, we like to have stru structural group for bundles. You know, just either top or PL or O or whatever. Well, in this case, it's G, so G, uh, GN is equal to the uh, homotopy equivalences. So the whole homotopy equivalences of, uh, so I guess, Sn minus 1. So it's a, when we have this vibration, the fibers are all these homotopy Sn minus 1s, and then they're glued together by homotopy equivalences of those things. So you can't expect anything nicer than that, but you certainly want that much. So homotopic coordinates. This, by the way, is also the same as proper homotopy equivalences. Of uh, Rn. So proper just means that under your homotopy equivalence, infinity has to stay at infinity. Any sequence that runs off to infinity, its image has to run off to infinity also. So that's what GN is. And then it's not so hard to see that uh, what do we have? We have uh, what well, we have diff or PL. And they sit inside top, and that sits inside G. So of course you can, you, if you've got this in, you can stabilize. You can go to n plus one by just adding an extra factor of r here, uh, or by suspending here, and uh, so you can stabilize up to g, which is what g is. So now we have another, we have another group around. It's not these aren't bundles, but they're the homotopy equivalent, you know, sort of the homotopy version, because that's what we're talking about. We've got x is the homotopy version of a manifold. This is the homotopy version of an actual normal bundle, stable normal bundle. OK, so now that's kind of the data uh, that we begin with. So we begin with a point quake complex, which has its spherical vibration, which is unique, unique enough for this to work, just like that. Stable normal bundle of a manifold is unique up, up to uh, uh, stabilization. Um, <coughs> yeah, so now that we have this, so now that this question makes more sense, you know, uh, what is, it? is x homotopy equivalent to an n manifold? Well, first of all, if it's going to be, so the first, so now we're going to, I guess I'm going to write down next is what's called the surgery exact sequence. Uh, so it goes, like this. Uh, so one thing we wonder, there will be four or five terms here. So one of the terms is uh, maps of x into 
Now we have to pick a category. Uh, we might as well take top. I got so top. Uh, go to top. <coughs> Homotopy classes of maps into G over top. And this is this is measuring the question of whether your G bundle lifts to a topological bundle. In other words, it's kind of like saying, take this picture, and could you make this, so wiggle this around and make it nice enough so that every point inverse is actually a copy of R and uh, S, R in my, uh, R, S in minus N, R, S minus N. So can you, can you wiggle that, that uh, homotopy version of a bundle into an actual topological bundle? That's kind of what this is measuring. And then if you've got if you've got such a map, then you can get what's called a normal map. So these are the this is a sort of a script S of, of X. So let me see what this is. This is this is uh, manifold N. This equivalence class is a manifold N with a map to X, which is a homotopy of equivalence. At some point here, I'm going to want to say that for a while, we're going to have a fundamental group of X is going to be trivial. So we're in the simply connected world. And then I'll say something about the non-simply connected world. So I don't have to say simple homotopy of equivalence yet. So it's a map from N to X, uh, and it's covered by a bundle map. So. <coughs> Uh, so it's a map from N to X, which is a homotopy equivalence, call it G. And then there's the stable normal bundle. So uh, instead of the tangent bundle, there's stable normal bundle to N. And over X is this FIVAC. Give it a name. What's the usual notation for this FIVAC? New. New? New. 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 But I've already used new. New tilde. Maybe. New J. New G. New G. Uh, G above. G above. Yeah. For spherical. Uh, yeah, spherical. Yeah. Okay. And this is the actual stable one. Yeah, exactly. For N, and then you have, you're supposed to have a bundle map. But they're not matched. I mean, you have to have the same category. I mean, you have to have a, right. So you need a top reduction. I think you need a top reduction. I, I, I need a reduction. So if, um, if, this, if this bundle, yeah. I would call it new X tilde. So new X is the spherical fabrication, and tilde is a choice of okay. top reduction or whatever. Yeah, so this is, this is a bundle map. Yeah. It's not canonical, is it? So this is, this is uh, equivalence classes of, of those things. Uh, but to define this function, you need a one choice of top reduction. You are classifying all the others, as you yeah. know this. So, so let, me, let me go back here for a minute. So remember there's this, there's this exact sequence. Um, so G over top goes into uh, I got that right? Yeah. Yeah, okay, good. So if you have, so if you, so I want to, so let's see. So I've got a map, I've got a map from X into VG. That classifies, so this map from X into here, this classifies the spherical vibration. But this isn't classified, it is, X has X is got a spivac spherical vibration, and this is its classifying map. So you've got that. Then you want to know if it, if it lifts. Well, if it doesn't lift, we stop the game right there, because it's not, it's not the homotopy type of a, of a manifold. So we, we assume it lifts. And now this is 
this is telling you, this is telling you how many lifts you have. So first of all, if you've got a lift, then you have an element here. So if you have a lift, it's one of these, it's classifying them. So if you've got the lift, if you didn't, we wouldn't be, in the, we, we'd quit and go home. So you've got a lift, and that's, that's this bundle due to the sub x. That's the, that's the, that's the lift we're talking about, it's an actual bundle. And now uh, we want to get we want to get one of these diagrams from this information. So how do we get this? How do we? In other words, we're trying to find a manifold. That we're trying to find some manifold in. This is called a, a normal map because it's got this bundle along, uh, bundle of information along with it. It's not just a function. The normal means you've got a map of, the, of normal bundles. So that's a normal map. So how, uh, let's see, how does this go? Let me, so how does, how does one, if it has a, if you have a lift at the top, how do you, well, I'm forgetting some of this. Anyway, there's a group, there's a group here, L, uh, in uh, the trivial group. Uh, assuming, this, the, assuming X is simply connected. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so this is this is this is equal to uh, zero, z mod two, zero, and z for n equal to one. One mod four. Two, uh, three, and four. All mod four. Uh, and by the way, since, since I've just written this down, this is the R invariant. This is the signature. Eight divided by eight. Eight. And. Uh, Let's see. That's all there is. Divided by eight? Yes. You look at the difference of the signatures divided by the eight. It has to be divided by eight. Okay. It's fine. Okay. Leave it. No, you have, you're right. Sorry, yeah. Uh, okay. okay. So, uh, well, let's see. So that, that's there. And then over here you have the same thing, but shifted by one. So this this is uh, this is a surgery exact sequence. Now let, let me try to make more sense of this. Uh, you know what are these maps and so on. Now the first thing is we just have a map of x in the v top. Have a lift and how does how does one get a manifold out of this? The idea is we want to get a manifold out of it, and then we want to try to kill. Kill the, well, you want to get a manifold out of it, and then you can always make the manifold bigger. You can always add extra, extra homology and homotopy to it, uh, so, that the, so that the map is the simply connected world, so that the map and the homology is onto the homology of X. And then you want to kill the kernel. And trying to kill the kernel is where you get obstructions. So, but how do you get this manifold in the first place? Well, let's see. So, so we've got x. We've got, so here's a, here's a big sphere. And we've got x sitting inside of it. So this is x. Um, it was red before, but it's well, still be red. And then it's got this uh, normal vibration. And this is the, this is the uh, spherical vibration out there. But there's also a map. Now that if this, if this lifts to a normal bundle, then you have a map to 
So take, take that normal bundle over x. So we have, uh, I guess we'll call it new x tilde. Total space of that is being mapped down to x. And now take the one point compactification of it. And that's what's called the tom space. So, but basically, well, basically you can think of, so this is, this is a sphere of some, I guess it's our sphere of dimension uh, s minus 1. It's a, it's a dimension s. It's the, it's the r s over here that we started with, where we have this embedded. But take the one point compactification so that it's a sphere. Now, I want, I want to map this into something so that I can apply transversality to a point and get a manifold back. So this is, you're right, this is, this, so this is, we told, I told you about this for top transversality last time or the time before. Here's a, here's a, an actual bundle over the topological space. And we can map this sphere into it, into the time space of it. So in other words, this is, this is going to go into the bundle because of, this, uh, because of this lift. And then everything else outside of it is going to go to this extra point of infinity, which we add on. We take this one point, take this one point compactification. You know, this is a one point compactification called the time space. And so you have a map of a sphere into this thing. There's this one, one point off in infinity. We don't much care about it. Because we're just going to take this map and make it transverse to the zero section. Make it transverse to the zero section. So this is bundle over x. Remember, I proved topological transversality for just a, a, the reals over a point. And then I said, well, you could do it for, a five, for an Rn over a point. And then I said you could do it actually for a bundle over, over um, any topological space because you did it locally trivially, for the locally trivial part, and then you extend kind of the usual game. So we have, so we, we have a map now from the sphere into, uh, well, there's, some, there's some, some stuff that goes off to the point of infinity. But we have this map. And if we make a transverse to the zero section, we'll get a manifold. So we'll get a manifold, which is kind of maybe not so far away. This is the, so you make this transverse, top, topologically transverse, since we're in that category, top transverse, to the zero section of this guy. And um, so then if that's f, or then f inverse of the zero section is equal to this manifold n. And then there's a bundle, then n will have a normal bundle, which maps to the normal bundle here. So that gives us, so this, this construction gives us uh, gives us up here, it gives us a, a normal map. So this, this, sorry, this part here, this leads us to uh, there exists a normal map in to x. M to x. And it's covered by a uh, bundle. It's covered by the stable normal bundle of n, something or other here for x. And this is just this is just a function. It's great, but, uh, it's just a function. So we're not yet at the homotopy equivalence. But we, we sort of have, 
They've got this diagram, which is a normal map. This is not yet a homotopy of cohorts. And now we, and now another step I have to say is that uh, we can arrange that, well, what? First of all, n pi 1 of n is 0. It's simply connected also. And the map taking the, any homology of n is always z coefficients. So the homology of x is z coefficients. This map f star is always an epimorphism. It's always on to. And you can arrange that just by, by uh, adding homology to n. And, well, I won't go into that. But you can arrange, you can get it to be on to. But it's, it's basically by making n worse. In some sense, if you're making it further away from homotopy equivalents, because you're adding in a lot of garbage just to get it to be on to. Then, the next step in trying to get a homotopy equivalence is uh, to kill the kernel. So you look at all these kernels and you want to kill them by surgery. And the obstructions to that are here. So you're, you're going to have a map in this over here. And if there's an obstruction, <coughs> And you can't, don't get anything. But if the map goes to zero because there's no obstruction, then like, sort of by exactness, you're going to get one of these pictures. That, that's the game. You see, we're, we're, after, we're after the first part of this. Is X hom the homotopy type of an N manifold? Well, we found a simply connected N manifold. And its homology is onto. And if we can make the homology an isomorphism, then the Whitehead theorem tells you there's a homotopy equivalence there. And then we've got a manifold, then we'll have a manifold which is homotopy equivalent to X. You know, we've proven the existence of at least one. So this part, this, let's see, this is often, this. so Kerber and Milner uh, discovered, you know, they isolated this picture, these groups, when they were trying to uh, classify homotopy spheres. And the spheres bound in manifolds of one higher dimension, and they wanted to surge through those manifolds, and they found these obstructions. So they did this in the early 60s, very early 60s. Well, then Browder and Novikov sort of simultaneously worked on existence and uniqueness, and, and uh, <coughs> Well, they, 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 went about, they went about this. This is sometimes called the Browder Novikov Sullivan Wall surgery exact sequence. Browder Novikov because they independently worked on the existence part and the uniqueness part. Sullivan because he sort of put it in this language and Wall because he did the non simply connected version. So uh, it's often given that name. But these groups go back to Pervert and Milner. And, uh, I have those that papers, I think, is readable, meaning that I sort of read it once. Uh, so anyway, so we're, we're, up, we're at this stage where we've, we've got this map onto and we want to kill the kernel. And you know, we're changing n so as to get this in here. They're not the same end yet. So how do you do the surgery to kill the kernel? Well, uh, we already did this when we killed the fundamental group. So imagine that the kernel is zero. This is a, an isomorphism up to some dimension. And well, hey, you've got you've got a kernel. So take a generator of the kernel, and you'd like to represent it by a sphere. And if you can represent that an element in the generator by an embedded sphere, then you'd like to know if the embedded sphere has a trivial normal bundle. And then you've, if you've heard of surgery before, you know, you, you take the sphere with the trivial normal bundle and you cut out the sphere across the disk and you glue back in this sphere across the disk that this bounds. So it's usual, you know, you're trading, you're just doing this, you're observing that uh, the boundary of dk across bn 
has two parts. It's S A minus 1 cross V N union V K plus S N minus 1. And the union is taking place alongside along the sphere S K minus 1 cross S N N minus 1. It's like a torus. It's like a torus, and the torus bounds a solid torus at both sides. So what, what you normally do is you cut out <coughs> SK, you cut out SK minus 1, you cut out your sphere across the disk, and you glue back in the opposite thing along that common boundary. Well, if you do that, uh, you know, you've got this sphere that represents something in the kernel. You've got this sphere, and if you cut out a thickened sphere and glue back in something that this sphere bounds, then the, the, the sphere is now trivial. You've killed, you've killed that sphere. You've killed that element of the kernel. That's, what, that's the basic idea of surgery. So, what's the problem in doing that? Well, you have to be able to embed the sphere. Well, as long as you're below the middle dimension, Whitney tells you you can embed the sphere. And then you've got to have a trivial normal bundle. Well, why is a normal bundle going to be trivial? I mean, this is a crucial point. The normal bundle is going to be trivial because you have a normal map. You have this normal map. And the image of this sphere over here is, hom is hom homologically trivial. So the image, above the image, the, the normal bundle is trivial because, it's, because it's this, you're, you're mapping to zero here. So that, that's trivial, so it pulls back to something trivial. That's why you need a normal map, so as to keep track of this bundle information. So that's what tells you that the sphere will have a trivial normal bundle, and then you try to carry this out. Well, it works. It works up to the middle dimension. And then, it, you know, it's in the middle dimension. You've seen this for the arc invariant, and you probably know it for the signature. It's in the middle dimension that an obstruction can, can occur. And so, you know, like when we did the R first did the R invariant with the two torus, and the middle dimension was H1, and you had the R invariant, that, that quadratic extent, uh, uh, quadratic enhancement, or whatever I call it, Q. Yeah. And I gave you an R invariant, and that's an obstruction to, to finishing things off in the middle dimension. Because if you can finish it off in the middle dimension, then by point grade duality, you have the other half. So, so that's what, so there's an obstruction. So, so we started, so to recapitulate, we started with a, just a map, a, a, a space X, and a classifying map for its spherical vibration. So that's given to us. That's the homotopy type together with the spivac normal vibration which is there from Spivak's theorem. And so you start off with that, and now you ask, does the bundle lift? And if it does, if it does, it should quit right there. There is, there is no manifold homotopy cohortex. But if it does lift, then uh, you've, got, you've got an example, you've got a guy, you've got a normal map. Because you lift to a topological bundle, so this is a topological bundle. And you've got a topological manifold. I haven't proved that it does have a stable normal bundle. And you get a bundle map. So now you've got an object here. You can have other ones with the different lifts. But you have In fact, this is what classifies the different lifts. If you, if you have any two lifts, you have two lifts up here, their difference is an element of this. So you, you've. Uh, so if you have one lift so that you don't quit, then the number of lifts is, is that group. All right. Now then, having gotten this guy, any one of them, having gotten one, you then try to make this a homotopy equivalence, and the obstructions are here. And if there's an obstruction, and you can't do it, and you stop. But if it does go to zero, then you can pull back and now you've got a, a homotopy equivalence. So having gone that far, you've answered the question, does, does uh, x 
at the homotopy type of an N manifold? Well, yes, this N is it. So again, to, re to recapitulate this, you got X, you ask for lifts, there may be a number of lifts. Uh, so you pick a lift, and then you look at the instruction <coughs> to killing all these kernels. And the instructions occur in the middle dimension. If, they, if there is an instruction, then X, then that particular lift does not give you a manifold. But if the instructions vanish, then you do get a manifold, which is homotopy proof of X. Okay, so that's that's that much. Now then, uh, you'd like to know how many. Well, all the elements here that go to zero here will give you examples. So then, uh, what's the equivalence relation here? I just said this is a, this is a collection of these things up to what? Well, it's up it's up to h coordinates in between them. So, um, so let's see. So two two of these. Two are equivalent. Uh, if the following diagrams for you, you've got N1, N2, and perhaps G1 and G2 to X. And now they're equivalent if this is a, if there's a homeomorphism, and it's all covered by bundle maps. <coughs> So that's, so you say that two of them are equivalent. Now, it could be that N1 and N2, you know, what you're measuring here is the whole top of equivalence. This isn't just, this isn't just, uh, if you have two of these, it could be that N is the same, but it's G that's different. And then they're different. They're different pairs. What you have here are pairs. We have n and x with a homotopy equivalence. Or I guess x is fixed, so you have a pair, n and g. And if you have n and a different homotopy equivalence with x, that's a different pair. So that, that's what I'm getting at here. These two are equivalent if they're, if they're homeomorphic and if the maps commute, if this commutes. Imagine that you've, you're wondering now how many of these there are. Well, so I've got an element here that goes to zero, but there may be several elements in, in its, that are in its preimage. So how do you classify those elements in its preimage? Well, so, so you say, what you say is suppose there exists a n plus one topological manifold with the boundary, well, a manifold and a map to, well, let's, let's make it a map to uh, x cross i. Call that capital G. And then the bound, and then, so the, the picture of this is you've got, here you've got n one, I think I'll call this one down here, the end zero, not sort of one and two, they're in the one and zero. And then you've got this W in here. And you have a map to X. X is our point break complex cross I. And this is the map. G naught, the homotopy equivalence from N naught to X. And this is the map, uh, G1, from uh, N1 to X. So that's, a, that's two pairs over here in this, what you call it. 
and now you've got a vortism between them, and it's all all a normal all a normal vortism. This is the normal, which always means you've got the bundle maps over over it. So there's a stable normal bundle over W, which restricts to the stable normal bundle of um, at either end, and it maps to the same thing over X. It's plus I. So how do you construct this? Well, it's, it's really the same game. It's really sort of the same. We get this W in somewhat the same way we got we got N by a transversality argument. And that, that'll pick up W. And as before, we can assume that this is onto the homology. And that, you know, this is going to have pi pi 1 is going to be 0 again. Rolling the simplicity that you So now, then we get, so if we have two of these that go to the same element here, so we have two of these that go to the same element, what, which two? Well, g naught, n naught to x, and g1 mapping n1 to x. So I've got those two guys, and they go to the same element, then we find normal map sort of in one higher dimension where we pick up W with a bundle map X cross I with these properties. And so constructing this is, is, is analogous to constructing the normal map here, which is on two. It's just happening in one higher dimension. Okay, well then, same game. You want to you want to do surgery on this to make it to make us say homotopy equivalence. So now we, we uh, so we, we try to uh, surgery away the kernel of uh, this map, and we give it a name, capital G, kernel of G star, that would be H star of W to H star of X, X cross I, X. Uh, so you want to kill that surgery with that kernel. Um, same instructions. Same instructions. You're still you're still the bedding spheres in W. They have trivial normal bundles because this is a normal map. You've got a sphere that's going to go essentially to a point over here because the sphere is in the kernel, so that maps to a point essentially. So the bundle over that's trivial, so you pull it. This is a normal map, so it pulls back to a normal bundle for that sphere, and then you do the surgery. And again, it breaks down in the middle dimension for the same reasons as before. So you get the same obstruction. So this is it's the same thing. It's, it's a 0, a z2, a 0, and a z. But now it's shifted by 1. So this is my n plus 1 equals 0, my uh, equals 0 mod 4, or 1, or 2, or 3, all mod 4. Just shift it up one. And so that's that's then, this is then classifying, or you, you work out for individual cases, you classify the number of manifolds, which are homotopy equivalent to X. It isn't just the manifolds, it's the pairs. It's the manifold and the map, the homotopy equivalents. So how many, how many pairs? We fixed X at the very beginning. And it's not how many manifolds are homotopy equivalent, but it includes how many, it might be the same manifold, but different homotopy equivalences. That's always a technicality to work out. Which, which it's exotic in one of two ways. It's either a different manifold, or it's a different homotopy equivalence from the same manifold.
Well, so that's that's uh, that's an outline. You know, for something to read, I, I think, as I said, I think Gregory Miller is is a nice place to start. If you want to read more because you see how these groups come in, and then uh, and then I don't know. Browder has a book on on, on simply connected surgery, uh, but there are various treatments. Who's who do you think I'm very biased because uh, I wrote a treatment. Okay, so you're so, <laughs> sure to read Andrew's thing. However, yeah. also for exotic spheres, starting with the Kevin Miller paper, there's a whole page, website, on my, off my website called Exotic Spheres, yeah. which rivals, I mean, if you Google Exotic Spheres, chances are that you'll come to this website, which has both Kevin Milner's original paper and lots of other original papers. Um, so that's what I'd recommend for that you start with there's, my. There's various ways of looking at it. You can, you can look, especially when we get to the non simple connected case, which I'll say about two minutes worth in, about in a minute. Um, this can be very algebraic, this subject. And I'm not frightened. Sometimes, I'm not I, frightened of that. <laughs> no, no, but I, I, <laughs> I, I am. So sometimes it's been, I felt like it's been my duty to uh, translate. Uh, you know, Larry Taylor, for him, Larry Taylor and I wrote a paper on surgery in Dimension 4. For I commissioned, in fact. You commissioned. <laughs> and I always felt that, that my job in that was to simply make it something that I could understand. I, I think it was surgery it. three through the spectacles of four manifolds, something like that. Something like that, yeah. <laughs> so, so making four it a treatment, I don't know where you'll find something as, as sort of, um, well, you know, you, I, I gave the lecture this way because that's how, that's the best way I can understand it. Uh, but uh, I don't know where you'll find something quite like this written down. Uh, it's probably out there somewhere. Well, I also have a page entirely devoted to surgery theory, not just my own either. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's lots of treatments out there. Yeah. I'm just saying I don't know one that's quite, quite like this to send you to. Uh, now, then, the non-simply connected case, well, we're, we're interested in mTOR. So for you know, pi 1 is not trivial, well, let's take pi 1. And the end for us, that example, which is z to the n. And that's good. This is, this is uh, it's certainly not as easy as a trivial group, but it's easier than a whole lot of groups. And so in that case, what happens over here? Well, the stuff in the middle is just the same. Now we're trying to get, we're trying to get a simple homotopic clause. We put an S under it. We're just trying to get a simple homotopic clause. And lots of this still goes through just the same way. The geometric constructions, the bundle stuff is very similar. Uh, but we're after a simple homotopy equivalence, and that means these obstructions change. So in both places they change, and basically uh, what you get, um, well, what you, what you, you, these things, for, for the torus, uh, what can I write down here? So, so now, uh, in the case of the torus, we start out not with a point very complex x, but we actually start out with a manifold. And if you like, just forget about the, the complex stuff and start, imagine you start with a manifold, and a certain amount of this is simpler. But it's still the same game. It's just still just a little simpler to have a manifold to begin with. Uh, and of course, you then have a lift to be top because you start out with that. Start out with that. And, um, and now we're interested in PL structures. And so it's, instead of going G over top, we're going. We want uh, top. Not G over PL. Oh. Well, okay. G, uh, yeah, G over PL is. So we're now we're, we're interested in lifting to PL. And of course, the tor end torus is PL, so you automatically got one, and then this classifies how many lifts you have. And this is similar uh, in sort of PL case, not the top case, but these groups are different. And so these groups, um, well, let's see. Um, these, these groups. Right, right here, so instead, 
we have ln of z to the n, and this breaks up as a, a, um, a direct sum well, binomial coefficient uh, summing of k of uh, yeah of just of, of these. So this is um, l k where the fundamental group is zero. So there, take those guys. So l k is k is uh, whatever it is, 1, 2, 3, or 4, mod 4. So you've got those guys, but then you have to take direct sums of them for all the different k's in the end. So that's just a much bigger group, but it's still kind of the same kind of thing. Still somewhat the same. And the same thing is true here. This is, uh, uh, I just said what ln was. Well, ln plus 1, you just put an plus 1 in the binomial coefficient. So you have those groups, and okay, that tells you what those groups are, but that's not quite the whole story. Um, the question is still, where does where does the Z2 obstruction come from? Well, you can think of these groups. Uh, you want so it's it's really the n equals four case, the signature case we're interested in, and. Or shall I say this? The, I mean, the idea, the philosophy of it is that the algebra here, so you're actually over here. You got to this point, and now you're wondering about how many PL manifolds do you have homotopy equivalent to the m torus? So in this case, we've got a, we've got a, a W between a couple of, so this is now a, um, an m torus with a PL structure. And this is the n you know, structure sub 1 for n1. And this is uh, n torus the PL structure sub 0 for this one. The two PL structures on uh, n torus. And now there's a w. It might be surgery away. And what is this algebra calling for? Well, the algebra here is saying that if there's a signature, in simply connected case, it would be saying if there's a signature, then you should uh, connect some. So suppose we were in the simply connected case and there's a middle dimensional signature problem. And so then we would, if we could, um, connect some with something with, with the opposite, with the negative signature, so as to kill the signature. So you, you want to take a manifold and glue it on by connected some, so that the whole thing then had signature that uh, vanished. So the algebra says, well, here's a, this W is the wrong W. You, you, you should kill the signature by throwing something else on there. Um, it's kind of like, you know, if you had the, uh, on the torus, if you had the, the wrong arc invariant, so you have the wrong, you have the lead group framing on this torus, well, you should just connect some with another one, if that's possible. And then when you connect something with another one, if you have two of them, then the alpha variant goes away. So that's kind of the idea. You, you wanna, so the algebra tells you to do this. Well, because of this, uh, because of this structure here, uh, this k varies all over the place. And you've got L k. So in particular, the algebra, when k is actually equal to 4, the n is big, but k could be 4. That's that group, which is a Z, a signature, that, that is sitting inside this big group. And so it could be that this big group, uh, you know, what we have here, says the way you have to change this manifold is by taking a four manifold of signature eight crossed with, say, a bunch of circles to get it up to, to, up to the right dimension. So take that four-dimensional thing and cross it in circles to bring it up to the right dimension. And you gotta glue, you gotta connect some of that, or somehow put that in there in order to kill the signature obstruction. Well, you have these manifolds of signature eight in all other multiples of four except dimension four, because of rock leads theorem. So the algebra tells you to do this, and you can't. And so there's an obstruction there, and it tells you that. Well, it gives you Wall's theorem. 
that's that's the point that that uh, you're, you're, you're trying you're trying to you're trying to kill the kernel in homology. You're trying to kill that kernel, and because there's this uh, all this fundamental group, uh, this thing here, which is measuring the obstructions to killing the kernel. It looks like this, which means you've got to bring in all these lower, smaller k's. The LK is for smaller k's. In a particular one, k is 4. And that's why you have to bring in the signature. And it says, take a, oh, I'm just repeating myself. It says it, it, that 4 manifold isn't there, and so there, there's a Z2 obstruction which lasts. So that's that's where it comes from. And so that's, well, I don't know. I, mean, I hope you get some idea of what the outline of this whole project is, because as I said, that's a, going through all this is a course, not just a oh, one-day's sure. lecture. <laughs> okay, thank you for listening.